Good morning. Welcome back to my channel. If you all know me, hi, hello. My name is Maya and Teddy. And we are your hosts of Motivation and Muscles with Maya Ting. We have co-hosts here. I've already had um, my cup of coffee. I'm logged into work. And before I even get started, um, as promised, yesterday I talked a little bit about um, the series that we are working on in my church. And it's basically titled overall, Making the Great Exchange, right? And last Sunday, well, the Sunday before last, we talked about how to trade in your um, anxiety for hope, right? And this week, I am going to share a principle every single day about um, trading in your disappointments for love. And if you want to know more about that, look at yesterday's uh, five mindful minutes and I talk a little bit more in detail about that. Are you going to let me talk? I have to do your morning routine. I'll do that in a minute. So are you choosing disappointment over love? And I did talk a little bit about yesterday how um, as humans, really women, we do it a lot too. But as humans, we love to stay unknowingly in our trauma. Sometimes our trauma, not all of us, but some, sometimes our trauma can be a safety net. Um, and we don't even know it. We And we want to know why we feel so stuck, right? And I'm not judging. This is stuff that I go through as well. It's real, right? And a lot of the situations that we go through is not caused by the enemy per se. It's stuff that we put our own selves through unnecessarily. And we don't even recognize it sometimes, right? Um and I think, at least for me, letting go of the pain, letting go of the disappointment, letting go, period, is foreign. Ouchie. No, no, sir. It's foreign. And it all boils down to having fear, right? But, you know, when you're in Christ, there is no fear, right? There's a healthy dose of fear. But when we put everything in perspective, uh, no, sir. He's trying to get the bubble wrap. There you go. Have at it. There's a healthy dose of fear. But we should not walk around fearful, if that makes any sense. Anyway, so the first principle is when you're talking about trading in your disappointment for love, is retain your character and compassion when you are disappointed. Example, your husband, your spouse, wife, girlfriend, boyfriend forgets your birthday. Now, you have a right to be upset because your birthday is your birthday. It's a special day. It's a day that you came into this world and you would like to be celebrated, right? Now, for whatever reason, your significant other forgot. And I'm just using this as an example. Do we, A, get bouted about it? Like, you, I can't believe it. You know, I was waiting all day and I'm dressed up in full face and makeup or whatever the case may be. And I can't believe, what, is it somebody else? What was you thinking? We all have... Mobile devices, is it not in your phone to alert you, to remind you that it's your spouse, it's your, it's your wife, your favorite person, your bestie, birthday today, you forgot? And you know, if you're anything like me, in my mind, strike one. <laughs> I may not say that, but my behavior shows that at times. And sometimes I can get out of character. And I've talked about this before. There are ways to address situations. There are ways to address people and still act like you know Jesus. Now, I know my hoodie says half hood, half holy. Um, that means pray with me, don't play with me. And it's a jokey joke. But at the end of the day, I'm not half hood, half holy. I'm 100% like you, holy. There is never an opportunity to act hood. Especially when we know and we recognize who we belong to and what we were delivered from. 
I know I keep mentioning 2023 was a horrible year and it was and I stand by that it really was a trying year this year from January 28th on has been a valley moment <laughs> and I can honestly look back and say there were times where I had to address a situation and I did logically biblically but there are some days that I just was out of order and out of pocket. I'm not going to lie. There's been several times where I've had to go to the Lord on my knees and repent because of my behavior. My behavior. Just because you are right and justified to go off doesn't mean you should. It's almost like we all see banks. There are banks on almost every corner. Does it mean you have the right to rob it? To enter into that establishment and ask for all their money? No, I mean, we have the right to do it, but does it make it right to do? And I think we get it twisted with freedom of speech too. Just because you can say it doesn't make it right. And at the end of the day, just because we can do it and just because we have the right to do it and we're justified in doing it would god sign off on what you have to say or would god sign off on that behavior retain your character and compassion when you are disappointed so my pastor used this analogy when mary announced in the bible that she was pregnant by the holy spirit she was legally married to joseph but not physically she wasn't in a physical relation with him just yet. And Joseph didn't out her. He actually said, I really just want to, and I'm paraphrasing, I really just want to put her away privately. Because in that day, she was, she would have been killed. She would have been murdered because of being a loose woman, you know? But the Bible does say that what Joseph did was he sat and thought. He thunk it over. And that's one thing that's missing in our culture today. We don't stop and think. And even though someone has wronged you, even though there's a misunderstanding and the list goes on, it's never an opportunity to act out of character and for a lack of a better word, at least give the situation to God and we filter how we should respond and behave through him and then respond. If we took a moment and just filtered all what's going on through him and then responded, can you imagine what our world would look like? Because right now what I'm saying, even as I'm saying it, sounds foreign. It sounds bizarre and weird because that's not what our TVs show us. That's not what movies show us. That's not what the world shows us. So now you want me to do something different? So you want me to punk it out all the way back. You want me to be a punk, punk, punk. That's not what God's asking us to do. When we said yes to Jesus, we were immediately, not only were we immediately gifted the Holy Spirit, but we were also given the ability to be sanctified. We were called to be a sanctified people. And what does that mean? That means set apart. And what does that mean? Is when things happen, good, bad, or indifferent, we're not to act like them. We're not. We've been them for way too long way too long retain your character and compassion when you are disappointed it's hard but it's necessary it's hard but it's necessary because at the end of the day there's only one person we want to please and that's Jesus and just think of it this way we will be in heaven much longer than we're on this earth. Much longer. At least in heaven, that's eternity. Here, what, 80, 90 years, if you're blessed. 
so. Retain your character and compassion when you are disappointed. When someone has wronged you, stop and think. Remember my analogy. Stop is S for stop. T is for think. O is for operate in the spirit. Do not sin. And P is pray before making a move. It's not easy, but it's doable. This dog. That is the first principle. Let's go ahead and think about that for a little while. Jesus, this dog has made a whole mess. All right. While I will clean up. And listen, if you've already screwed up like me, because my attitude can be foul sometimes, the good thing is God allows you U-turns. Just repent. Use this time to repent. That's what I'm going to do. Because I ain't good at this thing. My attitude can get way too worldly at times. Let's go.
Five minutes. Yeah. yeah. Let me log into the crisis room real quick. Ouchie. Yeah. So, I hope that you were able to get quiet with yourself and um, yeah, get quiet with yourself, do business with the Lord. And this is the thing, it doesn't have to start and stop. with this five minutes. You can do this several times throughout the day. I will be doing that. <laughs> because I have a lot of issues <laughs> that the Lord is working on me, working on me with. It's time to get this hood out of me. It's time to get this, this worldly behavior, excuse me, out of me. And I just appreciate that we serve a God that is patient. And that I feel comfortable messing up. I don't like messing up, but I know that I have a father that will love me no matter what, and that he knows my heart and that I'm not intentionally just messing up for the sake of messing up. And because I have a forgiving God, it's not that I want to abuse sin. Oh, I have a God who will forgive me. No, it makes me want to come to him even more with my stuff, with my sin, with my, with my issues, with my everything. He's so good to me, and I know he's good to you guys. So I'm gonna go. I have these dishes to wash and put away. And I'm in the crisis room too, so I need to listen out for that. So I will talk to you guys later when it's time for us to do this exercise. And my dog has the zoomies. I love them so much. Anyway, I'm going to go. I'll see you later. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Have a good one.